time. I just wanted to thank you for a very magnificent and masterful address. Thank you, Walter. It really was tremendous, and I want you to know there was just tremendous response at the end and when I introduced you. Well, we heard it back here, and I even heard what you said to your your boys, that the the students, that whoever well, there it was. Were Twenty kids came in, you know, yeah. and, and I, we, we had a good report on them. We had a good report on them, and they are. Uh, 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 you'd be surprised where it started. You would you like to know? Yeah, I would. Democrats for action. They uh, got word from your people. Uh, they received the information. Uh, they passed it on to the Mike Hannon for Congress Committee. Uh, he is a Los Angeles Police Department officer that's under suspension as a result of his participation in various demonstrations during 65. The committee in turn contacted the W.E.B. Du Bois Clubs of America in Los Angeles immediately. Uh -huh. And uh, these are uh, University of California group. These organizations immediately rushed into special meetings during the afternoon and evening of May the 19th. They decided upon this action to be aimed at the President of the United States. Members of the Du Bois Club contacted the Freedom Now Committee, which met on the afternoon of the 19th. The above mentioned organizations uh, resolved that they would throw this picket type demonstration around the president at Long Beach and it should be formed at approximately 2 p.m. May the 20th, continue throughout the day, continue in the evening following the president to the airport. Uh, two members of the Freedom Committee reported they were in contact with certain United Auto Worker delegates who were very much in sympathy uh, with them and aiding them and the anti-Vietnam protesters who would be participating. The theme of the picketing, they said, would be in war in Vietnam now. We had a man with them during the whole thing. Uh -huh. And that is going on, Walter, pretty well. You are an old hand at oh, this. Sure. But uh, that is going on every place. The yeah, vice well, president... My problem last night was, you see, I couldn't get a hold of it because you, it was the middle of your speech. They I, sat there, you know. I thought you quiet. handled it perfectly, what you said at the end that this is our meeting and not theirs but let's let let's not That's descend sure. to their level let's not That's descend exactly to their what we did you see then they then they lost the interest <laughs> then they got up and left well the what we ignored them i said these fellows look let's uh, they can pick it but they have no right to disrupt our meeting and if they don't behave let's just ignore them and and at that point our crowd did yeah, I think that was right. And, I think uh, it was happening. You heard the response. I mean, sure it just sharpened up the, the kind of support that they gave you there. That's right. And I thought that the reception was good. And I, they have asked me. I just finished the press conference a minute ago, and they were commending the speech. And I, uh, I pointed out the leadership, uh, uh, what we'd done. They asked me to come over. Uh, one of the fellows from uh, a London paper and an NBC and CBS too and make a recording of portions of the speech uh, for their Sunday shows. And I'm going over to oh, the It was a tremendous speech. And what we're going to do, we're going to print it up with a little uh, booklet that we got out of, for the award that we're giving you. And it'll make a very beautiful thing. And then I, at your convenience, I'd like to bring my other officers, and we'll come in the White House and, and, we'll, wait and make we'll it just, a We'll just love it, my friend, and we'll be waiting. And you just tell Bill Moyer someday that's convenient yes. and get your best people, and we'll take whatever time you need. And uh, I'm very indebted to you and the people of this country are well, for your uh, social consciousness and what you do. And I'm glad that you just don't uh, take one little bitty thing about to, whether you get $4 more for right. painting a building and make that the only issue. I'm glad you understood well, in I, sick people and in mentally retarded and in beautiful right. things and in uh, better roads and better schools and better churches and uh, better foreign relations and better understanding of the world and so forth. Well, what the 14B people mentality doesn't understand is that <laughs> nobody can make progress excepting that everybody makes progress. And I'll tell you what you liberals got to understand. You just got to understand this. Uh, the things you've been talking about all your adult life, by God, I've done them in two years. Now, you've got to get another program, and come on, and let's get it and get started on it, and quit uh, belly aching about something like 14B. I couldn't agree If you'll just more. tell me what we're going to do, our life expectancy is over 70, and we'll hit 80, and let's see what we're going to do with these folks. And uh, uh, 
Uh, we're just using half of our potential, but we're doing nothing about studying. What are you going to do about these kids' teeth? What are you going to do about these little kids' eyes? Uh, my daughter, Lucy, comes from a daddy that makes 150000 a year. And for three years, she is making C's and D's and flunking out because one eye is looking one way and one the other. Now, a third of the kids in this country got problems like that. We're doing nothing about it. That's what we ought to be working on. They up here raising hell with me. Joe Rao yesterday said Johnson sent his civil rights bill to the Congress too late. Well, now, instead of abusing me and tearing me down Why don't they and making me weaker and, and, and joining with the Dixiecrats in criticizing me, he knew that I had to incorporate in this bill the Supreme Court decision. Right. And when it came down, I had to take two weeks. The lawyers just couldn't rewrite it. No. But he likes to show his independence and jump on me. Yeah. But if they want to, they ought to get march into this town and help me get that bill passed. Right. They all say, well, let the president pass it. Well, I haven't got that power. I've just got to have some help. So we we'll do that. You've got to get some people into this town. These liberals have got most of their program passed, so they're, they're paying no more attention to supplemental rent. They're paying no more attention to... Uh, uh, the improvements in the administration of Medicare. They're paying no more attention to elementary education. They're just off by God uh, making speeches, and you yeah. got to get well, that crowd. It's easier, easier to make speeches. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went over, I don't know whether uh, 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 Harry McPherson told you or not, I went over to that Civil Rights Leadership Conference. Yes, sir. And I took them on. They, they had uh, all the red hot. Yes, he there. told they me. Harry told, told me. Don't get all these changes in the president's bill to hell with it. And so I took them on. I said, look, you have a right to fight for your amendments. But by God, if we don't get a single amendment in the president's bill, it, it represents a tremendous step forward, and we're going to go up there and work and fight for it. That's right, And we Walter. finally got them lined up. It's like pulling teeth. Uh, Walter, what they've got an idea, these boys, uh, that they're super legislative tacticians. Now, they're really not, and they don't get a thing in the world by going a whole lot farther than the president. If I, I think they make me weaker. I think if, uh, if uh, Bobby Kennedy and Joe Rao and uh, uh, Russell and Talmadge all hit me the same day, that I am weaker the next morning than if just Russell and uh, and uh, uh, Talmadge hit me. And I think if they'd get up and say, I've got a hell of a good bill, we'll pass this one and we'll get another next year, it would be better. But they want to yeah. hit me. And I think pretty soon, both of them working on you, they get each leader down where he is... a. Uh, he, he is not invincible. They did it with Roosevelt. They did it with Truman. They did it with Kennedy. He couldn't pass a large prayer with a lead pencil. And they will do it with me. Now, to me, it's not a wise thing to do. I think the party ought to get behind the platform and stay right behind it. Then if they want it more advanced, I'm willing to have a task force and sit down and work out one for next January. But sure. they oughtn't to be saying, well, he doesn't go near far enough, and they think that's the way to, to get him to meet it. But it's not. Well, look, the first job we've got, I don't want to hold you, I'm going to get a hold of my friend George Meany, and I'm going to say, look, goddammit, we're going to put together the Labor Democratic Party Johnson coalition because we need that coalition. We can't even begin to make progress unless we're working together. And goddammit, we're not going to let situs picketing and frustration over 14B stand in the way of the great society. That's right. You know what the story is this morning on, a, on my speech to your convention last night back here in the New York Times? No. It's the, the machinist man that installed you spending his time talking about Johnson not being interested in bills that were for labor. And the whole interview, Siegenthaler or Siegenbiller, and the whole damn thing was critical of the only guy that he's got to lead him. Now, uh, it's just like you're questioning your mother and saying that she's got too long a dress and, uh, and she doesn't wear enough lipstick and uh, that she's got a cross eye. Hell, she's your mother. And uh, uh, what you ought to do is say, come on, Mama, let's go. Yeah, well... <laughs> That's the way. I'll be in touch with you. Thank you, Walter. I enjoyed it, and I was glad to do it. And uh, uh, I think that we we've got a lot to do yet. And I think you take the running gears of that speech, and we can write a new program that'll make the New Deal, the New Frontier, and the Great Society uh, ashamed of themselves. That's right. Well, I thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Bye. Thank you.